Okay, we're up and going. Yes. Let's look at Luke chapter 4, beginning with verse 14 today. After the uh, account of the temptation of Jesus, we have this account of Jesus in the synagogue at Nazareth. Notice again the mention of the Holy Spirit. He returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Compare chapter 4, verse 1, where he was full of the Holy Spirit. And he was led by the Spirit in the desert. Uh, one of the points that Luke is making to Theophilus is that the Spirit of God was poured out upon Jesus and was powerful in Jesus. И мысль, которую передает Лука Феофилу, это то, что Дух Святой сошел на Иисуса, и тот исполнился Его силой. Gospel, Если вы помните первую часть uh, Евангелия от Луки, uh, uh, Дух Святой давал Захарии пророчествовать, and the Holy Spirit implanted the child in the womb of Mary. The Holy Spirit was upon Simeon and Anna. John the Baptist was full of the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. The Spirit of God came upon Jesus at his baptism. And now the Holy Spirit is working powerfully in the life of Jesus. He was teaching in all of the synagogues, according to Luke 4.15, and everyone was praising his teaching. И в 15 стихе сказано, что он учил в синагогах их, и от всех был прославляем. Now this was somewhat interesting because Jesus was not a Pharisee. И интересно то, что Иисус не был фарисеем. He had no rabbinical training. У него не было, он не учился у раввинов. Unlike Paul, who was schooled at the feet of Gamaliel. В то время как Павел получил образование у ног Гамалиила. А Иисус не был в школе равина. Посмотрите на Евангелие Иоанна 7 главу. И let's go down to John 7 verse 15 and 16 and read, please. So the people were amazed that Jesus could teach like he could without having gone to rabbinical school. His teaching was different from the teaching of the Pharisees. Yet people in the temple in Luke 2 had been amazed at his insights even at age 12. Но люди в храме, даже когда ему было 12 лет, это описывается во второй главе Луки, удивлялись его познанием и его пониманием. He was more accepted outside of his own hometown. Его более принимали, когда он был в своем родном городе. In America we have this saying that says familiarity breeds contempt. В Америке есть такое выражение, что знакомство с человеком служит поводом для недовольства. 
know you real well, they don't respect you as much as if you're from somewhere else. И это значит, что если люди тебя очень хорошо знают, то они не уважают тебя так, как, например, человека откуда-то, ну, To the people in Nazareth, this was uh, Joseph's son, the carpenter. Uh, how, what right did he have to be standing and teaching them? Um, he didn't have any uh, university pedigree of degrees. У него не было светского образования университетского. So in verse 16, he went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up on the Sabbath day, into the synagogue. И вот в шестнадцатом стихе Иисус пошел в синагогу в день субботний в Назарете. This was his custom. И это был его обычай. He did this every Sabbath day. Он делал это каждый день субботний. He was also allowed to read. Ему также позволили читать. In that time, the public reading of Scripture was an honor. И в то время чтение, публичное чтение Писания, это была честь. Это была очень важная часть проведения служения в синагоге. There would be a reading each Sabbath day from the Law of Moses. И каждую субботу в синагоге читали из Закона Моисея. And then a reading from the prophets. Затем читали из пророков. There were three sections of the Old Testament, the Law, the Prophets, and the Writings. And each Sabbath day, there would be one reading from the Law and one reading from the Prophets. And on special feast days, they would read from the Writings. А в особенные дни праздников также читали еще из Писания. Look at Acts 13 when Paul went to the synagogue in Antioch of Pisidia. И откроем Деяния 13 главу, когда Павел сошел в синагогу в субботний день в Антиохии Писидийской. Let's have someone read Acts 13 verses 14 and 15, please. Прочитаем Деяния 13 глава 14 и 15 стихи. Они же, проходя в Пергии, прибыли в Антиохию Безидийскую, и войдя в синагогу в день субботней серии. После чтения закона и пророка в начале этой синагоги послали сказать им, уже братья, если у вас есть слово наставления от народа, говорите. Alright, so you can see there it says after the reading from the law and the prophets. Извините, здесь сказано после чтения закона и пророка. When the scripture reading was given, oftentimes uh, one of the teachers would preach on one of the scripture readings. Now at the front of the Jewish synagogue there was a chest or an ark that kept the scrolls of scripture. И в передней части синагоги находилась коробка, как ковчег, в которой сохранялись вот эти свитки писаний. Это был как шкафчик, где эти свитки хранились. The reader or the speaker would go and stand in front of that cabinet that the scriptures were held in. И uh, чтец или uh, говорящий, он uh, стоял uh, как бы перед, uh, этим, uh, перед этим ковчем, как, в котором хранились эти свитки. There was usually a synagogue attendant, one that handled the scrolls. И uh, обычно в синагоге был человек, который uh, смотрел за этими свитками. Sometimes the scrolls were quite large, you'd have to hold them like this. Иногда свитки были довольно-таки большими, и их нужно было вот так вот держать. И 
и смотрители в синагоге, он вынимал вот эти свитки и давал их читающим. Often there was a cover that went over the scroll, and the synagogue attendant would take the cover off and hand the scroll to the reader. And the reader would unroll the scroll to the place where he was supposed to read. И чтец, он раскручивал свиток до того места, откуда он должен был читать. So you see that in Luke 4.16, Jesus stood up to read. Now this was something he was accustomed to doing. And he read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah that was handed to him. Now, at the time that Jesus was reading the scriptures, there were no um, chapters or verses in the Bible. It was just continuous Hebrew script. Um, and uh, Jesus found the place where we call Isaiah 61. Chapters and verses did not come into the Bible until the 1500s. That'd be the 16th century. But Jesus found the place where it is written. Uh, it's interesting to me that Jesus was reading the scroll of Isaiah, and later on Philip taught the eunuch about Jesus from the scroll of Isaiah. Интересно, что Иисус здесь читал э, книгу Исаи, а также э, отрывок из книги Исаи, а также, что Филипп э, учил Эфиопа, Эфиопского Ефа э, по э, отрывку из э, книги Исаи. Um, Jesus read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Иисус э, прочитал, Дух Господень на мне. And of course, the spirit of the Lord had come upon him at his baptism. И, конечно же, Дух Божий сошел при крещении. Then he says in verse 18, because he has anointed me. И затем в 18 стихе он говорит, ибо он помазал меня. God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Бог помазал Иисуса Христа Духом Святым. Much as David and Saul in the Old Testament had been anointed or uh, uh, with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Luke and Acts are part of the same uh, story. Look at Acts. Uh, compare this verse in Luke 4:18 with Acts chapter 10, verse 38. That's Luke 4:18 and Acts 10:38. Luke 4:18, Acts 10:38. Let's read Acts 10:38, please. Прочитайте, пожалуйста, Деяние 10.38. Как Бог Духом Святым и силой помазал Иисуса из Назарета, и Он ходил, благотворя и исцеляя всех, обладаемых дьяволом, потому что Бог был с Ним. All right. Both passages say that he was anointed by the Holy Spirit, and then he went about doing the things that God had set him about to do. He was uh, 
was sent by God to preach good news to the poor, he says in Luke 4. Uh, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Recovery of sight for the blind. To free the oppressed. And, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In other words, the goodness and grace of God was going to come upon the people. It says Jesus then rolled up the scroll and handed it back to the attendant and sat down. Uh, everybody was looking at him intently. Maybe he had been expected to read more or to say something about the reading. But he simply said in verse 21, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. God had anointed prophets in the past, in the Old Testament. But never before had such good news been sent to God's people. Never before had such grace and favor been offered to God's people. Uh, it was obvious that Jesus was telling them that there was something exceedingly great and special about his ministry. И Иисус буквально говорил, что uh, что-то было особенное, великое в его служении. But the people of Nazareth said, isn't this Joseph's son? Но люди Назарета сказали, не сын ли он Иосифа? They couldn't bring themselves to uh, look so highly on this boy that they had seen grow up among them. Они не могли посмотреть как бы с уважением Uh, the people uh, wanted Jesus to work uh, signs and wonders there in Nazareth like he did in other cities. But Jesus told them in verse 24 that no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. Uh, the people did not respect him as they did in other places. And this tempted them to reject him as a great teacher or as the Messiah. И это искушало их для того, чтобы они отвергнули его как великого учителя, как мессии. How could God work so powerfully through one that we've known for most of his life? Um, Jesus gives two illustrations about God's people rejecting great prophets. Just as the people of Nazareth were rejecting him, others had rejected God's spokesman in the Old Testament. Uh, he first gives the example of Elijah. Uh, during the time that it didn't rain for three and a half years. But it was none of the widows in Israel that benefited from his uh, greatness. But a Gentile widow in Sidon 
benefited by trusting in God and in Elijah. Но только вдова из средства Сидонской получила благословение от того, что она доверилась Божьему пророку. Then he points out that it was Naaman, the Syrian leper. Затем он указывает, что именно Наиман сирианин, прокаженный. Uh, that was healed by Elisha the prophet and not one of the lepers in Israel. <laughs> so because Israel had rejected the preaching of Elijah and Elisha, great blessings from their ministry fell upon Gentiles instead of the Israelites. Великие благословения их служения получили не израильтяне, а язычники. The book of Acts, of course, tells how that reluctantly, finally, God's people preached the word to the Gentiles. И Деяния также показывает, как как с такой неохотой в конце концов евреи проповедовали благую весть язычникам. And this is because in many cases the Jews rejected the gospel. So the rejection of Jesus at Nazareth seems like a foreshadowing of the rejection of the gospel by the Israelites. Прообразом он бросил тень на то, что в будущем евреи будут отвергать Евангелие. In verse 28, the people in the synagogue at Nazareth were very angry when Jesus said this. И в этом стихе люди в синагоге они исполнились ярости. They didn't like being compared with the rebellious Israelites of Elijah or Elisha's day. Они им не понравилось то, что их сравнили с бунтовщиками, израильтянами. So they got up and literally drove Jesus out of town. And they wanted to throw him off a cliff. But uh, he miraculously walked right through them and went on his way. Uh, the reason that he did not do the great miracles in, Ma in Nazareth is because the people did not trust him. They did not believe in him. Jesus often said that all things are possible to those that believe. But in Capernaum, things were different. Uh, let's read uh, Luke 4, 31 and 32. в Капернаум, город Галилейский, учил их в дни субботни, и дивились учению его, ибо слово его было с властью. All right. Not only were the people in uh, Capernaum amazed at his teaching, they were amazed at his authority. And in... Oh, go ahead. In that synagogue in Capernaum, there was a demon-possessed man. Luke defines the demon as an evil spirit. И Лука называет бенца, демона, нечистым духом. The Greek text says an unclean spirit. И греческий текст буквально гласит нечистый дух. This uh, unclean spirit cried out to Jesus. И этот нечистый дух закричал к Иисусу громким голосом. And asked Jesus, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus silenced the demon and, and called the demons to come out. Uh, 
then the demon threw the man down on the ground and came out. Uh, we have many accounts in the Gospels of things like this happening. Uh, I have a student in Denver from China. His name is David Fengwei. And he claims that this kind of thing happens in China as well. But uh, anyway, the people were all amazed. Uh, they were amazed not only at the authority of Jesus' teaching, but at the authority he had over unclean spirits. И они были удивлены не только его э, властью в учении, но также э, той силой э, и тем, что он делал. So Jesus' reputation grew. Э, то есть репутация Иисуса возрастает. Uh, the Bible um, says we've talked much about angels and demons in our previous classes. И мы много уже говорили об ангелах и демонах на наших предыдущих занятиях. And of course you remember we talked about the fact that uh, demons were cast out both before and after the cross. И uh, мы говорили о том, что uh, демоны изгонялись до и после того, как uh, произошла смерть Иисуса на кресте. Uh, after even Acts 16, Paul is casting out demons. И в Деяниях 16 главе Павел изгоняет демона. И демоны упоминаются в книге Откровения. Many people believe that today it's not possible for demons to do this kind of thing to people. И многие люди в современном мире думают, что сейчас демоны не могут проявлять такую активность. But I'm not sure that they can really prove that by the Bible. Uh, we know that with Christ, we can overcome the demons. And we know that man has a choice whether to come to Jesus or not. И мы знаем, что у человека всегда есть выбор, прийти к Иисусу или нет. Uh, beyond that, there are many questions that are left unanswered. Кроме этого, существует много вопросов, на которые нет ответов. Now, the book of Luke goes on to talk about Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Далее, Евангелие от Луки рассказывает о тёче Симона. Uh, obviously, Peter was married. Uh, очевидно, что Петр был uh, женат. Be to have a in law being uh, тяжело иметь тещу, не будучи женатым. And uh, Paul uh, makes it clear that the other apostles were married. И Павел указывает, четко указывает на то, что другие апостолы тоже были женаты. In 1 Corinthians 9. Uh, excuse me, that's yeah, I've got the wrong passage here. No, first Corinthians nine is right. I just got second Corinthians. Uh let's look at um let's look at first Corinthians nine verse five. Почему я почел за нужное спросить братья, чтобы они... Первая Коринфянам 9, так. Нет, Разве мы не имеем права брать верующую жену с собой, как другие апостолы, например, братья Господа и Тихо? Или же нет? Это только Варнава, и я тоже не сами за это. Alright, so Cephas and James and others were married. То есть... Кипа и Иаков были женаты. So, Simon's mother-in-law was very sick with a fever, and Jesus raised her up. То есть, тёща 
Петра э, заболела, у нее была горячка, и Иисус ее исцелил. Verse 40 says that many sick people came to Jesus, and he laid hands on them and healed them. И в сорок стихе сказано, что многие больные э, различными болезнями приходили к Иисусу, и Он возлагая на каждого из них руки и исцелял их. And he cast demons out of many people, it says in verse 41. Uh, they called him the Son of God because the demons knew who he was. It strikes me that there were so many people uh, that had demons in them in the first century. Меня впечатляет то, что в первом веке было так много людей, которые были одержимыми дух, э, духами нечистыми. Uh, this, this makes it difficult for me to believe that there are still not many people who have demons working in their lives. И поэтому мне тяжело поверить, что сейчас э, не так много людей, в которых э, работает демон. But Christ is the answer to the demons. Но Христос это ответ влиянию демонов. Uh, Jesus uh, tried to get away and have a break from the people. Uh, everyone who is in, in ministry with people needs time to think and to pray and to study. They wanted Jesus to remain with them in that one place. But Jesus said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom to the other cities also. He says, because that is why I was sent. Uh, this is sort of like in, in Luke 2 when he said, I must be about my father's business. He had a strong sense of his mission. He was compelled by God to do what he was sent to do. Today there are two kinds of preachers. Uh, there are those preachers who just want a job. And they do as little as they can just to get by with the job. И они делают настолько мало, насколько возможно, просто чтобы, чтобы поставить галочку на своей работе. But there are those other preachers who have a mission. Но есть также другие проповедники, у которых есть миссия. And they are committed to that mission no matter what. И они э, посвящены вот этой миссии, несмотря ни на что. Whether they get paid or not, they will continue to try to preach the gospel to others. These are the men who are walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, that we have a treasure in jars of clay. We have the treasure of the gospel. And it is our duty to spread that treasure to as many as possible. Now in Luke chapter 5, Jesus called his disciples to a greater mission. Uh, they were working men, uh, fishermen. 
это были э, рыбаки, которые работали. They were making an honorable living. Они честно зарабатывали на жизнь. And they were repairing their nets as all fishermen must do. Uh, Simon Peter obviously respected Jesus. He let Jesus use his boat as a pulpit. Uh, got the boat offshore so that Jesus could preach to the people on the shoreline. When he was done preaching, uh, Jesus told Simon to put out into the deep water for a catch. And letting the nets out was was a lot of work, and so uh, Simon did so because Jesus told him. And they caught so many fish that it took two boats to get the fish in. Simon was amazed at the miracle, and in verse 8, he said, Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. Then he said, uh, in verse 10, Don't be afraid, from now on you will catch men. Um, it's a lot of work to fish. Uh, uh, Gorlovka is not on the sea coast, is it? No. Uh, okay. uh, I have been to a place called um, uh, Peterhead on the northern coast of Scotland. Я был в городе, который называется Питерхэд, это в северной Кире, в Шотландии. It is a fishing village. Это, по сути, деревня, ну, деревушка, где рыбачат. The men of that village go out into the North Sea to fish for weeks at a time. И мужчины из этой деревни, они на целой неделе отплывают в Северное море для того, чтобы ловить рыбу. When you shake their hands, it's like grabbing a piece of steel. Когда пожимаешь им руку, кажется, что ты железяку какую-то пожимаешь. They are men who are used to the weather and used to handling great nets. Это люди, которые уже привыкли к погоде, которые привычный к тому, чтобы справляться с сетями. It is hard, backbreaking work to catch fish, even on modern fishing vessels. И это очень тяжелая работа рыболовства, даже используя современные рыболовные судна. It takes commitment and dedication to keep fishing. И продолжать рыбачить, для того, чтобы продолжать рыбачить, нужно много посвящения. It takes determination to find the fish. Нужно иметь установку, вот эту, найти рыбу. And it takes the same kind of commitment and determination to find the men who will obey the gospel of Christ. И такое же посвящение, такое же желание должно быть для того, чтобы найти человека и привести его ко Христу. И uh, рыбаки людей, они продолжают uh, делать свою работу все время. Uh, to to, uh, to uh, вчера я uh, пошел в место, где я занимаюсь спортом. Uh, Uh, many people are not Christians. 
done. And while uh, I was exercising, I had an opportunity to talk to different people about God and about the scriptures. Now, the people in that place know that I will talk to them about the scriptures. Uh, they sometimes just come up to me and ask me things about the scriptures. This is no longer strange to them or to me. I try to be always busy. And I believe that uh, these men uh, were taught by Jesus to be always fishing. Я верю, что эти люди были научены Иисусом, что им нужно работать, рыбачить все время. These men had to change the focus of their efforts. Они должны были изменить фокусировку своих усилий. Verse 11 says they left everything and followed him. Один из них говорит нам, что они оставили все и последовали за ним. They had to make a decision about what they were going to do. Они должны были принять решение о том, что они будут делать. И это было важное решение. Тяжело представить себе, что они должны были оставить, когда они оставили свои лодки, свои сети. Remember that when Jesus died. Помните, когда Иисус умер? Peter had temporarily forsaken Jesus. Петр на некоторое время оставил Иисуса. And when they didn't realize what Jesus' plan was, когда они не понимали того, каким был план Иисуса, in John 21, Peter went back to fishing for fish. И в 21 главе Евангелия Иоанна мы видим, что Петр вернулся к рыболовству, он пошел рыбачить. Затем Иисус спрашивает его, Петр, любишь ли ты меня более, чем это? Это Иоанна 21 глава, 15 стих. And Jesus called Peter back to doing what he was supposed to do, and that is fishing for men instead of fishing for fish. So no matter what you have to do to support yourself, Don't ever forget that our main focus is not fishing for fish, but fishing for men. And there was uh, uh, another incident here of healing of a man that had leprosy. Uh, this man trusted that Jesus could do anything to heal him. At the end of verse 12, the man said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. I think when we pray, this would be a good uh, thing to say. Я думаю, что в нашей молитве это будет очень такая хорошая фраза. Say, God, if you are willing, I know you can do this. Сказать, Господи, если ты хочешь, я знаю, что ты можешь это сделать. And I am asking you to do this without shame. И я прошу тебя сделать это без всякого стыда. God can and does do great things. Бог может и делает великие деяния. And it is always all right to ask him. И всегда нормально попросить его. 
So Jesus' fame spread to uh, many places because of his great deeds. И слава Иисуса, uh, она распространялась uh, по всем местам, uh, потому что он делал великие дела. The story of the paralytic in Luke uh, 5 <coughs> is also in Mark chapter 2. This is where um, the crowd was so full in the house that uh, the men couldn't get to Jesus. So they tore the roof off, or part of the roof off, to get their friend to Jesus. Think of how much effort this took. How much effort would you put forth to get your friend to Jesus? Сколько усилий вы, вы можете приложить для того, чтобы привести ваших друзей к Иисусу? Пойдете вы настолько далеко, чтобы разобрать крышу, если понадобится? Вы перейдете ли вы свой распорядок и сделаете что-то, что вы не рассчитывали делать? Would you give up your plans or your entertainment to make this happen? Jesus saw how much they wanted to get to him in verse 20. Jesus said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Иисус сказал человеку, прощаются тебе грехи твои. Заметьте, Иисус является тем, кто прощает грехи. But the Pharisees believe this was blasphemy. Но фарисеи считали, что это богохульство. Because only God can forgive sin. Потому что только Бог может прощать грехи. But Jesus is God as well as man. Но Иисус является и Богом, и человеком. He healed the man to prove that he really could forgive sins. Он исцелил этого человека для того, чтобы доказать, что он действительно может прощать грехи. Verse 24 is the key. И 24 стих это ключ. Says that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Чтобы вы знали, что Сын Человеческий имеет власть на земле прощать грехи. See, to prove that he had the authority to forgive sins, he healed the man's physical condition. Заметьте, для того, чтобы доказать, что он имеет власть прощать грехи, Иисус исцеляет физическое состояние этого человека. The same Jesus that forgave this man's sins. Тот же самый Иисус, который простил грехи этому человеку is the one who gave the great commission after his resurrection. When he said, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Look over in Luke 7. Let's go down here to uh, verse uh, 47. And 48. Actually, let's read 47 through 50. Прочитайте 47 50. А потому сказываю тебе, прощаются грехи ее многие за то, что она возлюбила много, а кому мало прощается, тот мало любит. Ей же сказал, прощаются тебе грехи. И подлежавшие с ним начали говорить про себя. Кто это? Что и грехи прощает? Он сказал женщине, вера твоя спасла тебя, иди с миром. So in neither of these cases was uh, the person asked to be baptized. Заметьте, что в обоих случаях человеку не говорят, что ему нужно креститься. Jesus just said, your sins are forgiven. Иисус просто говорит, прощаются тебе грехи твои. This is the same 
thing that happened also with the thief on the cross in Luke uh, 23, verse uh, 39 through 41. И это тоже, что случилось с разбойником, висевшим на Христе в Луке 23 главе. So we have three cases where Jesus just pronounced somebody forgiven. То есть у нас есть три случая, когда Иисус объявляет кого-то прощенным. The paralytic in Luke 5. Парализованный в Луке 5 главе. The sinful woman in Luke 7. Грешница в Луке 7 главе. And the thief on the cross in Luke 23. И разбойник на Христе в Луке 23 главе. But after his resurrection, after Jesus had died on the cross for people's sins, then he gave the great commission. Затем он дал нам великое поручение. Look at Luke 24, verse 46 and 47. Покаяние и прощение грехов будет проповедовано во имя Иисуса. Beginning at Jerusalem. Начиная с Иерусалима. Notice that this preaching of repentance and forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus had never been preached yet. Заметьте, что проповедь покаяния и прощения грехов во имя Иисуса еще не происходило. This is because Jesus had not died and risen yet. Это потому что Иисус еще не умирал и не воскресал. But the preaching began in Jerusalem in Acts chapter two. Но эта проповедь начинается в Иерусалиме в Деяниях второй главе. Repentance and forgiveness of sins was first preached in Jerusalem in the name of Jesus in Acts 2.38. Покаяние и прощение грехов во имя Иисуса было проповедано в Иерусалиме во второй главе Деяния 38 стих. So Luke 24.47 То есть Луки 24 глава 47 стих goes with Acts 2.38 параллельным местом является Деяние 28. В этом месте первая проповедь Евангелия была сказана. И впервые было проповедано покаяние и прощение грехов во имя Иисуса Христа. And that's where the apostles said, "Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins." И именно в этом месте апостолы сказали, что нужно покаяться и креститься во имя Иисуса Христа для прощения грехов. So this is how you talk to somebody who doesn't believe that you have to be baptized in order to be saved. И именно это вы можете сказать человеку, что для того, чтобы спастись, нужно покаяться и креститься. You share with them the story of the paralytic and the sinful woman and the thief. И можете рассказать им историю о парализованном, о грешнице и о разбойнике на кресте. Then take them to the Great Commission in Luke 24, 46 and 47. Затем указать им на великое поручение, записанное в Луке 24, главе 46-47 стихи. 
and then take them to Acts chapter 2 and show them how the gospel was preached. And show them the difference in what happened before the death and resurrection of Jesus and after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Nobody ever became a Christian until after the death and resurrection of Jesus. No one was ever baptized into the death of Christ until after Jesus died. Нельзя было креститься в смерть Христову до того, как он умер. No one was ever buried with Christ until after he was buried. Никто не мог быть погребен со Христом до того, как Христос был погребен. And no one was ever raised with Christ until after he was raised. И никто не мог быть воскрешен с Христом до того, как Иисус воскрес. So this sequence of passages can help you teach other people the gospel. <coughs> it's especially effective with Baptists and other evangelicals that don't believe that baptism is necessary. All right. Uh, how about we take a five minute break about right now?
Hi there. Hello. We're missing some of them. <laughs> <laughs> We're missing a lot of them. I'm going to go and call them up. Okay. <laughs> Иисус сказал, что не здоровые нуждаются во враче, но больные. И я пришел призвать неправедников и грешников к покаянию. И мытари и грешники — это те люди, которые действительно согрешали. Levi or Matthew was one of these tax collectors. Levi или же Матфей был одним из этих мытарей, сборщиков податей. Tax collectors were notorious for being dishonest and and robbing people of their money. И сборщики податей они имели такую плохую репутацию, что они воровали у людей. Look how similar. Verse uh, 30 is with Luke 15, verse 1. Uh, in Luke 15, uh, Jesus was gathering with tax collectors and sinners. And uh, the Pharisees said, this man welcomes sinners and even eats with them. And in response to that, Jesus told the three stories about the lost. He told the story of the lost sheep. The lost coin, and the lost son. Uh, the son uh, was the uh, one who left his father for a foreign country. And squandered his living. And when he returned home to his father, uh, 
Notice what the father said in Luke 15, 24. Let's read that. All right, he was lost and now he's found. And in Luke 19.10 it says that the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. So in Luke 5 Jesus was eating with the tax collectors and sinners. In Luke 15, he told the three stories of the lost to explain why he was eating with tax collectors and sinners. And in Luke 19, he went in to eat with the tax collector in his house. И в Луке 19 главе э, говорится, что он э, обедал у э, сборщиков вот этих домов. This tax collector in Luke 19 was Zacchaeus. И в Луке 19 главе этим сборщиком вот этих был Закхей. Uh, Luke 19, 7. Луке 19 глава 7 стих. The people complained against Jesus. Люди раптали э, They... по поводу Иисуса. They said he has gone in to eat with a sinner. And it's in Luke 19.10 that he says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. So sinners or lost people need to be found, that they need to be saved. То есть грешники или потерянные люди, их нужно э, найти и спасти. But look carefully at Luke 19, Но внимательно посмотрите на Луки 19, главу 10 стих. There's two things the Son of Man came to do. Uh, есть две вещи, которые Иисус uh, пришел сделать. He came to seek and to save. Он пришел искать и найти и спасти. Why was Jesus eating with the sinners? Почему Иисус обедал с грешниками? He was seeking them. Он искал их. Seeking means you have to go out and find them. You have to build relationships with them. И искать это значит, что нужно выходить и общаться с людьми, строить с ними отношения. But you're going out and seeking them with a particular purpose in mind. Но вы выходите и ищете их с определенной целью. You're not seeking them to join with them in their sins. Вы не ищете их для того, чтобы соединиться с ними в том, что они делают. You're seeking them to save them. Seeking sinners means putting an effort in to make contacts with people that are not saved. And many times uh, we in the church can get comfortable just being with people that are already Christians. И на церквях нам э, довольно-таки удобно э, общаться уже с теми, кто, христи... кто является христианами. We can isolate ourselves in a comfortable little society of Christians. Мы изолируем себя в нашем э, удобном обществе христиан. But we need to seek sinners so that they might be saved. Но нам нужно искать лес для того, чтобы они могли спастись. Now, I don't know much about your culture in the Ukraine. Не знаю э, вашу культуру в Украине. But in our culture there are activities where it is possible to seek sinners. 
но в нашей культуре есть некоторые определенные виды деятельности, где можно искать грешников. Uh, there are places where you can meet and associate with people that are not members of the church. Есть места, где можно встретиться и общаться с людьми, которые еще не являются членами церкви. Sometimes uh, our children are involved in football or sports activities. And we can meet and interact with the parents of other children. Uh, we can become friends with them and we can begin to talk to them about God. Uh, there are many other activities uh, where we can meet and form friendships with Sinners. Uh, we can help people with certain needs that they have, and in that way we can meet and form relationships with sinners. But whatever we do, we need to always be seeking the lost so that we can save the lost. Churches that are not reaching outside of themselves are not fulfilling this mission. The church must remain evangelistic the preacher should be like Jesus we should be seeking sinners if we're just preaching to our own people on Sundays we're not doing what God has asked us to do если мы просто проповедуем нашим прихожанам в воскресенье то мы не исполняем того что Бог сказал нам делать So, <clears throat> remember that Jesus was always seeking sinners. Anybody want to talk about that or ask questions about that? I know. How many people did you bring to church? Uh, I don't know in my life, a lot. Uh, will there be 20, uh, 50? In my lifetime? Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, when I was a teenager, just a young boy, uh, when I was like Uh, 16 and 17 years old. And now I'm 57 years old. Uh, I was studying the Bible with my friends at school. I baptized some of my friends when I was a teenager. One of the men that I baptized when I was a teenager, <coughs> is now one of the teachers at the Bear Valley Bible Institute at Denver. Uh, throughout my time preaching in churches, I would try to have Bible studies with people that were not Christians all the time. Uh, I think uh, being a, a soul winner is part of the uh, mission of an evangelist. Uh, my father was not a preacher. He worked for an oil company. Uh, 
Do you know what an oil company is? Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, my father was a Christian, though. And he was always studying the Bible with somebody. And even though he was not a preacher, and, but made his living in a different way, he led many people to Christ during his life. Uh, brother uh, Denny Petrillo, that is the president of the Bear Valley Bible Institute, uh, just the other night, uh, he told me that late at night he baptized a man that he'd been studying with. And he's been doing this all of his life. So, soul winners help other people be soul winners. We have young ladies here at Broadway that study the Bible with other ladies and bring them to Christ. But we have to seek people in order to find the opportunity. And then we have to ask people. Uh, many times we worry about offending someone. But if we have already shown that we care about them, we earn the right to ask them to study the Bible. Uh, I knew I wanted to marry my wife when she helped me study the Bible with the young man and lead him to Christ. Uh, that was nearly 40 years ago. So, um, yeah, I think it's very important. Uh, I'm not satisfied with this last year in my ministry. Because I don't feel like I did enough of studying with people. I think I only had four Bible studies with people this year. I mean four different people. And only two of those were baptized. And uh, only one of them still remains faithful. I hope I can do better than that this next year. Go ahead. Uh, do you have a Sunday school for teenagers? Yes. Uh, what is the age range uh, in uh, the Sunday school? Oh, we have children. We have children in every age range, but uh, our teenagers are divided into middle school and high school. У них вообще воскресная школа есть для детей любого возраста, но для подростков у них есть на средний класс и старший класс. This is sixth, seventh, and eighth grade is the middle school. Uh, can you say it years? Okay, about um, uh, ages uh, 11 through 13 is middle school. 
And about 14 through 18 is high school. And uh, they have different classes for those age groups. Uh, what I'm interested in is um, baptizing teenagers. Yes, uh, we baptize quite a few teenagers. Uh, there's another man here that works more with the teenagers than I do. Um, but uh, we baptize a lot of our teenagers. Some of our teenagers do grow up and leave home and they leave the church. But this has more to do with the parents than it does with the minister. Anybody else? He's working with teenagers right now at his home church. And, and they're like about 12 ish, and uh, he's still in consideration should he offer them to be baptized or should he still wait? Well, some of those young people. Uh, are probably not ready and there may be a couple of them that are especially serious that maybe they are ready. Yeah, you teach them the truth and teach them uh, a well-rounded uh, uh, Bible education. Им нужно преподать истину, и им нужно дать такую основательную основательную библейское образование. You teach them what it means to be a Christian and a member of the church. И их нужно научить, чтобы они понимали, что такое быть христианином, что такое быть членом церкви. And the ones that are really ready will probably let you know about it. И те, кто действительно готовы, они сами подойдут к тебе и дадут знать об этом. But uh, many of the older teenagers tend to be skeptical about God. Because of things they learn in school. And some good Christian evidences will help them uh, come to faith in the Lord. Основание христианству, доказательства христианству, то это помогает им прийти к Господу. Also be by what they see in you. Также поможет им то, что они увидят в вас. If they see that you're for real and that you care about them and you're consistent over time. Если они увидят, что вы действительно заботитесь о них и делаете, делаете это с постоянством все время. Then they'll listen more to your teaching. And when they see that their parents are sincere about being Christians at home and at church, then they'll listen more to their parents' teaching. Children are affected more by what they see than what they hear. If they hear one thing and see another thing, they're not going to be impressed. Okay, somebody else? 
Еще вопросы? А, у меня есть вопрос. Мы вот увидели на примере Христа один пример, как можно достигать грешника, да? Там, кушать с ним. Какие бы он еще посоветовал мне достижения грешника? Okay, so on the, uh, looking at the example of Jesus, we saw that uh, one of the ways to reach out for sinners is to having meals with them. Uh, what are what are other ways um, that you can suggest uh, to reach out for people? Well, I play sports with them. Uh, and uh, the people that I play sports with know that I'm going to talk to them about God sooner or later. And I have had, uh, I have had several of them at church. And in my Bible classes. And I have seen them when they were having struggles in their lives. I visited their families in the hospital when they were sick. <coughs> so they know that I care about them whether they become Christians or not. And in this way, opportunities come to talk about God. Thank you. I don't, as I say, I don't know enough about the activities that go on in Gorlovka to know the different kinds of things that you do that would be settings where you could be involved with non-Christians, but I know there are some. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, uh, the question is, how, uh, are there many Christians in your church that are doing the same? Not as many as I would like. We have uh, a handful of people that, that try to do it. Now, several people will invite their friends to different things. Uh, they don't feel comfortable studying with other people. But, but they will invite their friends to activities. And they will introduce their friends to me or somebody else that is comfortable studying with them. <coughs> Sometimes we have classes here on marriage and how to have a good marriage. And we get people to invite their friends to this class to help their marriage. И у нас есть люди, которые приглашают своих друзей на эти занятия для того, чтобы те изменили свой брак. But we do this so that we can meet these people. Но мы делаем это для того, чтобы мы могли познакомиться с этими людьми. Sometimes we have uh, uh, programs for our older people about things that older people are interested in. <coughs> And they invite their friends. We try to meet these people so that we can involve them in the church. Uh, we have 
gone out into neighborhoods and worked on people's houses before. We have cleaned up their property or painted their houses. Uh, we've done these things with, without charging them any money. And we have met people and talked to people and baptized people after doing those things. И мы знакомились с людьми, связывались с ними отношения, и позднее крестили их. Иногда у нас есть специальные программы для детей. And we invite the parents of those children's friends to bring their children. И мы приглашаем родителей и родители наших детей приглашают родителей своих знакомых, чтобы те приводили детей, и в результате мы знакомимся с детьми и с их родителями. Иногда, когда у кого-то рождается ребенок, мы идем к ним в госпиталь. Мы идем к ним и проведем их в больнице. And uh, we impress on them that now that they have a child and that they are responsible for this child. И мы показываем им, что поскольку у них родился ребенок, теперь они отвечают за него. They need to teach this child about God. Они должны научить этого ребенка о Боге. So this is an opportunity to bring them into the church. И это возможность привести их в церковь. 1 Corinthians 9, 20, what is it, 22? 1 Corinthians 9, 22. I became all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Я сделался всем, для всех я сделался всем, чтобы спасти, по крайней мере, некоторых. So we reach out to people where they are. То есть мы пытаемся достичь людей там, где они находятся. Yeah, back in the back. А просто статистика, сколько людей, которые никак не относятся к церкви, то есть не через семью, там, не через хороших друзей, может быть знакомые, но никак не относятся к церкви, сколько в год, например, Um, do, you, do you know um, like about uh, like any statistics, statistics about people who came to Christ without being influenced by uh, either family or friends or uh, yeah, not very many these days. Well, what about your uh, congregation? Yes, most people in our congregation have been influenced by a friend or family. And the, the lesson in that is we have to go make friends with people before we can lead them to Christ. И урок заключается в том, что сначала нам нужно подружиться с человеком перед тем, как мы приведем его к Христу. That's the seeking part. If somebody has somebody in their family, that they think might be uh, possibly led to Christ, They can create situations where you can become friends with that person. And then through that friendship you can lead them to Christ. Most people 
people do not come to Christ just because they uh, came and they liked the preacher. Ну, большинство людей не приходят к Христу только из-за того, что они пришли в церковь и им понравился проповедник. Preachers who lead quite a few people to Christ. Проповедники, которые привели довольно таки много людей к ко Христу. Are preachers who are going out there and making friends with people. Это те проповедники, которые выходят из церкви и знакомятся с людьми, завязывая с ними дружбу. Now, if somebody already has a friend and brings them and you teach them, then it's mostly because of that friend, but you're teaching them, and so all that's good. Remember, Jesus said, go make disciples. Помните, что Иисус сказал, идите и научите. He didn't say, stay where you are and make disciples. Он не сказал, что оставайтесь на месте и учите. He didn't say, wait for them to come to you. Он не сказал, подождите, как, э, подождите пока к вам не придут. That's why Jesus went out and made friends with the tax collectors and sinners and ate with them, so he could teach them. Именно поэтому Иисус шел и знакомился с Благодарями и пешниками, и ел с ними для того, чтобы он имел возможность учить их. Anybody else? Well, thank you. No problem. Before, before we leave, is there anything else you want to know about anything about our congregation or, or my life or anything you want to ask since we're talking about it? Okay, what kind of sports do you play? I play a, I play a racquetball. It's sort of like handball. It's sort of like squash. I don't know if you know about that game. Uh, 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 racquetball. Okay. Well, we don't have it, but we know what it is. Yeah, and and uh, they have squash in in uh, Britain and Europe. It's it's with a racket and a little ball and a court, you know, and it's a very fast game. And, and I do a little bit of running and working with the weights. Okay, I will, Lord willing, I will see you next Wednesday morning then. Have a good week. God bless you. Bye.